Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So this is Bismillah Khani. And uh, thank you for taking time on Sunday morning to join this webinar. And uh, today I'll be talking on the topic of um, getting a practical introduction to Lama Index. Um, so let me start sharing my screen. Um, So you're seeing my second screen, I just pulled in my content here and let me just press and put it in presentation moment. All right. I hope you can see my screen and also the content. So the topic for today's webinar is improving the performance of RAC systems using Lama and Bex, um, a practical approach. Uh, so before we delve into discussions about uh, today's webinar, I just want to give a like, short disclaimer. Okay, so I just want to tell that this is, you know, today's webinar is all about my humble effort to share my learnings on uh, catching up what is going on with this LLM space. And then I particularly selected this topic of RAG. And um, when I was, uh, you know, exploring these rack systems, I found this Lama Index to be a very uh, practical tool or framework. And uh, so I'm not a you know, full-fledged, you know, expert on these systems. But whatever I learned uh, in the last couple of months, I'm going to share with you. And uh, for this, I just want to give credits to a lot of uh, open source contributors and the Lama Index team. Uh, and most of my content is based on their tutorials, blogs, um, collab notebooks, etc. Okay, so just be open and uh, whatever if you have questions, I'll try to answer. If not, we can connect later in you know, order to discuss this. Okay. So on that note, um, the content for today is very simple. We'll just start with an introduction to generative AI, and then we will. Um, uh, get familiar with a uh, basic WAC systems and we'll understand why basic WAC systems can be easy to build but uh, it is more challenging to optimize the performance for our production grade systems and how can we solve those issues with building some advanced techniques in RAC using Lama and X framework. Okay. I hope that excites you. And with that, um, okay, I'll just skip this. Yeah, but quick, I'm Bismillah Kani. I work as a staff AMS Gate. And these are my social uh, connection coordinates. If you like to connect with me and discuss on these exciting topics, feel free to do that. Um, okay. So what is generative AI? I think everybody knows what it is, but maybe a few of them who are completely new into it, just to have a context for them. Uh, so generative AI is a special branch of artificial intelligence that has emerged to the spotlight in the recent years, and especially after uh, November 2022, after we saw the ChatGPT applications and uh, becoming the fastest adopted technology in ever in the history. And uh, so, what does that do? And is uh, what Generative AI is capable of doing is it can generate new content, and this new content could be stories. Um, chat conversations uh, question and answers um searching for particular information and trying to get insights from those uh, uh informations or even even more advanced stops like generating images or even videos or music okay. and this generative AI has been there for several decades okay but with a recent in 
So what made it to be more exciting in recent times, right? So the generative AI, although has been there for a long time, the performance of these uh, models that drives this concept was suboptimal, and they were not very close to any realistic um, applications. And what changed this landscape is the introduction of a special kind of models, so-called the foundation models, right? And these foundation models have taken this generative way to the next level, and they have revolutionized these entire landscape. And what are these foundation models, right? And what is so special about them? These foundation models are very, very large models. They are in the orders of magnitude, several billions of parameters. And these large models or huge models have been trained on enormous amount of data. It wouldn't be wrong that almost the entire internet, whatever is available, has been compressed has been fed into these foundation models and these foundation models know everything whatever there is there in the internet be it is in the text form or image form or even in other modalities as well and because of these these foundation models are acquired some superior knowledge that outperform an average uh, human beings and they can or able to go and find or even generate um, you know, all or answer any questions that you ask. So that's the power of this foundation models that drive into this generative way. Right. Now, yes, uh, the chat GPT is cool. Uh, it's able to answer all types of questions that we ask. I almost use every day uh, chat GPT, right? Being it to, you know, using to prepare my PPTs or even answer my emails or uh, sending out uh, messages. Um, so it is, it articulates well. So I'm uh, not a very good uh, in space of articulation. So I just put my whatever comes in my mind and then it generates so, um, um, then things. But the problem is uh, how do we can take this and build a production grade application out of it. So when it, to comes into an enterprise applications, there are a lot of custom data uh, data sets or data corpus where these models uh, try, you know, start to hallucinate and uh, and they do not give the answer in the right context what the user is asking for. So this problem of hallucination everybody knows what is it so hallucination is a problem that llm space llm uh, models face uh, and what they is it is that it instead of just uh, giving you the right answer um, well, sometimes the model doesn't know the appropriate answer for the questions but instead of saying that it doesn't know the answer it just make up some answers and these answers are look so hollow uh, no so uh, so accurate uh, um, that you start believing it but in a way that these answers are not accurate uh, so one way to solve this hallucination and uh, uh, ask the uh, LLMs models to answer questions relevant to your custom purpose is to build a system called uh, a RAC, right? So RAC stands for uh, Retrieval Augmentation Generations, and it has two main components. One is the retrieval, and the second one is the generation. And this is a new A technique, or it was there for some time but with the recent power of llms being added to it and this has been a, a quite popular technique for uh, building a custom you know chat application or QA applications so what it can do is it can um, retrieve relevant data from uh, external sources external data sources uh, be it a text corpus be it you know other forms of data like pdfs or websites okay where your custom or you know uh, 
particular uh, uh, company related documents or information are stored and it can augment these uh, content to the LLMs and uh, provide the uh, proper context to the LLM so that the LLMs give you the relevant answers. Okay. And uh, this has been uh, quite popular nowadays. Uh, almost like everybody can build a rack system now in just a few lines of code. Uh, but the thing is like how we can make it production um, ready application, right? So there are many pitfalls, many limitations of a basic rack system. Uh, so we will see today, like what are some practical techniques, how we can approach these limitations. All right, yeah. So where rack can be used, uh, rack can be used in, for example, academic research, uh, where we have the scholars and researchers, and uh, they in their everyday, they actually do literature search is a significant part of their uh, you know, work. And they have to read a lot through you know, hundreds and thousands of uh, papers. And uh, they have to actually summarize those. So now let's say if we build a rack systems and we can feed all these uh, research papers into the rack pipelines and uh, you can then ask the LLMs to summarize uh, these papers into a consumable format and which makes the researchers more productive so instead of going and reading uh, hundreds and hundreds of papers you could have a personal research assistant for you in in, in a form of a rack pipeline and that could do a lot of heavy lifting for you in terms of summarizing papers so similar thing, you can also extend this in anything, right? In, in, in law firms where you have to read a lot of documents or maybe in uh, enterprise things where you have a lot of technical documents, financial documents, okay, uh, legal documents. So all this, it's quite laborious to go through, try to find answers for them. Um, so these racks can make very productive tool and also uh, uh, in co as compared to the chat gpd kind of things where it is bit made to this custom documents rag can augment the llms with this custom documents and fetch you the right relevant answers okay if you don't have a rag pipeline if you just answer, try to ask an llm chatbot like chat gpt it doesn't give you the relevant answer Okay, so you would just extend this to any institute, like educational institutions or administrative tasks. Okay, there was a question. I think somebody raised the uh, hand. I don't know who it is. Okay, so now we know what is the context for today's webinar. Now we'll go into a little more technical. So how do you build a rag system and what are the different components in a rag? And uh, to build a rag, all you need is a bunch of documents or, you know, um, and these documents is what will augment the LLM to so that the LLM will give you the right relevant answers. But how do we make that work, right? And the steps to be followed is as shown in the schematic diagram. So you have a bunch of documents. And what you do is you convert these documents into a searchable index. And there is a retriever, right? When a user asks a query to the query engine, this retriever takes that query as a reference and go and fetch relevant documents from this indexed uh, database and return those key uh, relevant documents to the query engine and this query engine take all this relevant information give it back to the llms along with the user's queries and now the llm will answer the queries only in the context of whatever the relevant information that this retriever has retrieved 
and it synthesizes the final response through the users. Okay, so there is a few key components here. One is how do you index and store these documents? And there is a retriever who goes and fetch the relevant documents from this index database and gives that relevant documents to the query engine. And this query engine is nothing but a combination of your LLMs. Your LLM could be your OpenAI, ChatGPT, or your open source Llama. And this LLM takes the query, takes the relevant context, and then synthesizes your final response. Okay. I hope that is very pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, I think it's very easy to understand. Also, there are frameworks that can make it easier for us to implement this. Uh, many of you who might have worked on information retrieval space might have thought, hey, this is not something new. This has been existing for so many years. Uh, but the only thing would be is uh, the addition of LLMs here, I think. Yeah. Okay, with that, I will move to uh, the next. Uh, slide okay this is the same thing it's a little more zoomed in version of what i explained here so whenever you build a rack uh, keep this in mind there are three main building blocks for a rack one is the ingestion uh, there is the retrieval the final one is the synthesis in the ingestion building blocks, we have documents. These documents could be of anything like text videos or websites like our uh, you know, uh, software document pages like that. And these are then converted into chunks, right? Uh, so those chunks are nothing but uh, these are converted into uh, small, small chunks because in a PDF, you have several hundreds of pages. And in every page, you will have like at least uh, you know, 20 to 30 uh, lines, right? And uh, this needs to be broken into uh, smaller pieces. For example, one paragraph could be one chunk, or probably one page itself could be one chunk, right? And how granular or how coarser you build these chunks has a lot of impact on your RAG's performance so that we will see in, in the later context. So now once you broke these documents into chunks in either how granular you want or how coarser you want, uh, these are still in the form of text, right? And uh, um, AI systems doesn't understand the text modalities. So this needs to be converted into a numerical representations. So every chunk is then passed into an embedding model. Again, this will be another foundation model. And these chunks are then converted into numerical representations called the embeddings. Okay. And these embeddings are nothing but the latent space representation of these small, small text chunks. And um, whatever the embedding model you used, that also has an impact on your RAX performance, right? So now we have the documents, we broke them into smaller text chunks, and these text chunks are converted into a numerical representations called embeddings, right? Now, how do we? Or, you know, uh, uh, store this so that it could be searched and retrieved, and that where it's called called a vector database. So these embeddings are then indexed and stored into a vector database. There are human, numerous number of uh, vector database like PinePhone, VV8, you know, etc. and etc. But we are just uh, you know discussing about a high level concept. So now once we have a vector database second building block is the retrieval and what happens in the retrieval is an user sends in a query right he asks some questions that he or she is interested to get answers from the system and what it retrieval does is it retrieves the top key uh, relevant um, um, documents from this vector database 
and this k is again a hyperparameter it could be the top three uh, relevant documents or could be top six top nine like whatever you know and then along with this the query is also is being sent to the llm so this llm can be like your chat gpt or open ai um, um, uh, gpt3 or gpt4 you know whatever the llm or llama like that so now instead of answering the llm answering these questions on a wider context right now the context is restricted now the con it has to answer within whatever the context that we are giving to the llms so in that way the hallucination of the llm is reduced as much as possible and because of that the relevancy of your response is higher Otherwise, if you don't build these pipelines, if you don't give the right context to the LLM, the relevancy could be uh, not so good as this would be with this rack pipeline. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, what happened? What about the good old days of incremental machine learning, where we, uh, you know, uh, do uh, transfer learning with a pre-trained backbone neural network and uh, just train it on our custom proprietary data? So here, uh, I guess that comes under fine tuning paradigm. Uh, why not directly do fine tuning of LLM, where we just train it on our custom proprietary data? Why we have to resort to this complex, uh, you know, search and retrieval pipeline? Okay, yeah, I think what one answer I could straight away give is uh, fine tuning is uh, very expensive, and. Uh, and this is a much more smarter way uh, of uh, getting a better relevant response to your queries instead of fine tuning your more model to your custom data set so the fine tuning never stops right because every time you might get a different different uh, domains uh, that the llm has to answers so it could be a continuous investment that you need to do because there will be a, some infra cost and uh, it is also not guaranteed that the fine tuning will work um, so this would be a more uh, less expensive uh, more smarter way of doing it than the fine tuning uh, even after this it is not working uh, it still faces an issue i think then it is when you need to explore a fine tuning okay uh bismillah this is james yeah hi james hi with your permission can i just add one more point uh, to this particular uh, uh, response sure sure yeah so the i think fine tuning and rag uh, are actually addressing two different dimensions of retrieval Fine tuning is a way to change the way, uh, fine tuning is a tool to change the bot's behavior, right? If you want the bot's response uh, to be in a certain way, uh, like if it is a medical uh, scenario, you want it to respond in a certain way, or if it is a sentiment analysis scenario, you want it to uh, follow a certain sample and then respond accordingly. That, th that is where fine tuning is an ideal first choice. But RAG is to in, a, either expand the knowledge base or to restrict the knowledge base. If that is the use case, then RAG is the first choice. For example, a university wants to give response to about all their subjects to a doubt clarification to the students. You don't want the bot to go beyond your syllabus and fetch from internet and give. So there we are restricting the knowledge base. So when restricting or expanding the knowledge base, then I think RAG will be the first choice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that is an excellent intuition, James. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, feel free to unmute and uh, no, I have an open discussion so it's uh, just make it more interactive there was a question uh, on chat uh, if you see uh, okay the question on chat about open search and elastic search if I have a 
good text search tool like open search or elastic search will they need to create embeddings uh yeah so this um so this elastic search as uh, uh um, you know, open search it's mostly built on a keyword search that's basically the traditional um text search engine would be that's what i understood as i mentioned I'm also a name or a beginner to this. So what this is more interesting is it actually search on an embedding space, right? So then it tries to find the similar context by comparing your query to your documents similarities through a simple cosine similarities, right? And uh, and it could be much more effective than a simple keyword search, right? And it's also more efficient um, because it can compress a lot of informations into one embeddings, and you could that embeddings could represent a paragraph, right? And this paragraph, then if you just search at a paragraph level, and then if you just find the top key paragraphs, and then you would do, but uh, maybe you can add a hybrid search like a keyword search like that. So, but this is a complete, a different approach to a search, right? This is, or the elastic search might be doing a simple keyword search. And this is doing a latent space embedding based semantic search. And that's just a simple keyword search, right? So it gives more importance to the semantic similarity of your query and whatever the documents that has been represented as your embeddings in your vector database. Yeah, this is a, that's a completely different approach. Uh, so the second question, okay, there is another follow-up question. Uh, once top K documents are found, uh, what is it, what is sent to LLM? The embedding format of the document or the original language, uh, though the original uh, text, because um, your OpenAI uh, GPT-3 or 4 models takes, uh, it's just another API call. So it will send the text as your context along with your query, right? It will construct a prompt template with your query as your questions. And it will tell that, hey, answer this question with the following context and this context is what the retrieval will retrieve and give that or augment, uh, that augment your LLM with this context. So then the LLM will answer only within this context and it will not go out of it. Okay, that answer this question. Uh, hold, okay, then let's move on. All right, um, so there are several uh, frameworks, right? And the most popular would be like Langchain, um, which made this, or you know, which sort of made the development of such LLM applications more easier, right? Uh, so any developer could use this framework and develop uh, a lot of, you know, innovative LLM applications, right? Uh, but then uh, this Llama index was introduced almost like one year back. Okay. And why I was particularly interested in this Llama index is more focused on RAG pipelines and how to build a production grade RAG pipelines. Right. Now you could do, you could use this, you could build a RAG using Langchain as well. But Langchain is a more generic framework for LLM. But Lama Index is more specifically have a lot of capabilities focusing on RAG. Okay, since I am also new to this LLM space and I started, I was more interested in RAGs and uh, I initially built RAGs using Langchain. But then once I know about Lama Index, I thought it was very fantastic framework that I should be learning. Then I started learning this. So, okay, anyway, uh, that's my history. But Lama Index is a framework 
uh, that connects your data to your LLMs, like GPT-4, GPT-3.5, right? And um, it has uh, uh, different functionalities, like how you can store the data in databases effectively. And how uh, hi, Bismillah. Yeah. yeah, I just had a question. My name is Danish. Uh, so you said uh, you are moving from the Langston to Lama index, right? So mm -hmm. what are the problems have you faced in the Langston? Why? Well, because I have been building through the Langston. So, so far I'm not able to find any difficulty, but I, I just wanted to explore like how beneficial Lama index over the Langston. Okay, yeah, I'm also uh, not a, a big expert in this, but uh, if you are building rack, yeah, you could do it both. Uh, but I think that Lama Index has more capabilities, right? A lot more focused on racks and a lot more advanced uh, features in racks that addresses the limitations of building a rack, a basic rack pipeline. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, you know, what level of complexities that you have built a rack. Uh, uh, rack. Uh, but a basic rag i think we could build uh, but when we want to have more complex more granular control um then i think llama index has an edge over large and that's my personal opinion yeah okay yeah fine, fine. you can go ahead why well, because um even i have been using like databases curious so that was my level and along with the agents so i hope you can cover that agents as well right uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but probably if not today, we'll cover it later. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, carry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, just a basic introduction to Lama Index to just get started. Um, and uh, you could just build a rag with like five lines of code. So you could uh, import the vector store index and simple directory reader. And uh, if let's say if you have uh, data in the data folder and just point your uh, simple directory reader to that data folder and load the documents, it could load all the documents into this variable. And then you can build a vector uh, database uh, from these documents, right? Once you have that, then you can build a query engine um, using this index and then just ask start asking questions to this query engine and then it will generate a response no no where where is the the embedding uh, you know coding where you embed it uh, uh, or are we assuming it's already embedded in pinecone or uh, you know any other vector db like chroma vv8 yeah so here is the default uh, vector store index but mm -hmm. Uh, Lama Index supports uh, almost all uh, vector databases like Find4, PV8, OpenSearch, etc. What is that directory loader? A directory reader? So if you have your documents in a directory called data, right? You could just dump your text documents, PDF documents, um, and other things. Then that could take it and uh, converts that or you know it's just a node parser okay so, no every node is basically a chunk of documents okay. yeah. no so you are doing a query here mm -hmm. but query is to the llm not to the okay query is semantic search when you say dot query it means search okay so this is an abstracted way right it it, it sort of abstracts a lot of things behind this, uh, you know, under the hood. So the the way the the default LLM would be the OpenAI GPT at three point five. So mm. you change this way to the LLM and you can get the response. So where is the semantic search call? Uh, that is also taken care for you. So because you are building this query engine on top of this index, right? Mm. So query engine already has the retriever on it. Mm. So it has a retriever plus the synthesizer. So when mm. you ask this query to this query engine, mm. first the query engine will take this question, converts that into an embedding, sends to the retriever, mm. 
uh, uh, do the semantic similarity finds the top k uh, let's say the default k would be three, uh, three mm -hmm. options, and then augments that to your llm and get, you know uh, creates the uh, prompt uh, template sends it to the llm and get the response do the post processing everything is taken care for you and give you the final response is this pseudo code or real code it's a real code Mm, yeah, it's quite simple. Okay, yeah, let me then bring in the, uh, let me also bring in the real code so that you can start having things. So let's find. Uh, One more yeah. question, uh, Bismillah. Is this your custom code or is this out of the box provided by Lama Index? Uh, nothing is my code. So I already mentioned uh, everything I taken from blogs. From most no, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, sorry, I, I didn't mean that. What I meant is that Llama is it Llama index out of the box uh, uh, functionality, or is this the query engine or the other stuff you're showing is actually got more uh, details that are not shown in those simple file lines? Yeah, it's an abstracted framework. It is directly from Llama index framework. I didn't do any utility functions to abstract this. It's already abstracted for you. So if you want to build a rack using Llama index, all you need is just five lines of code. Could you map this to the chunking? You know, the in the diagram you showed earlier, you had the various phases of ingestion and chunking yeah. and then putting in there, then the second phase. Could you map these lines of code to that diagram to help us understand? Yeah, so this first two is your ingestion phase, right? Um, okay. We increase the font in that collab notebook. Okay, okay. So here, this is first is the ingestion building block, right? Where we are converting documents into chunks and then putting into index. Now let me just zoom in a little bit. So is that the from index function? It does that does that? I'm trying to map it to the lines. Yeah. Yeah. So these two, I believe will be a one-to-one comparison to this blue box. This graph. OK. OK. And this query engine is basically is your retrieval, this red box. And also, in a way, synthesizer also, because, uh, because that's what it, what it does is it takes the query right and it basically goes and retrieves the relevant documents from this vector database this is your index and then also calls the llm right it, it just sends this information this information calls the llm get the response and give it back to you Hi, Bismillah Keshav here. Uh, just to just to uh, explain uh, things in a better way for uh, Jyotin. So Jyotin, uh, Lama Index is a Python library, and this load data is a method in that Python library. If you go to the source code of Lama Index, you will see that load data method has a uh, other sets of uh, code written there, and that does all the processing under the hood. So the like the chunking, embedding, storing yeah, in the correct. index. Yeah, correct. And so, who... so fair point, but Keshav and Bismillah, maybe programmatically you can exercise more control for those respective components like chunking or querying. Right. So I am assuming this is the baseline default code, but there are more programming capabilities around it, right? For yeah. more elementary control. Okay. In, in fact, you can you can build your own uh, uh, retrievers as well. So, uh, I mean, the current retrievers might be by default some uh, k nearest neighbor algorithm. You can bring your own uh, uh, mm -hmm. default. Uh, I mean, uh, custom algorithms for retrieving and all. Fair. Right. Like if you want to specify paragraph or page, like Bismillah was mentioning earlier, uh, there is no mention of that in these five lines of code so whether it's paragraph chunking or page chunking or what chunking is currently uh, some some magic pick you know that it picks today right 
Uh, I, I think Bismillah, you would be able to demonstrate in the later part of this, right? About the chunking part. Yes. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. So we could even go and see some of the variables inside. Let me just run this. So this is at POC level, right? I mean, is it? Uh, have you productionized it? No, no. It's just uh, whatever I learned about Lama Index, I'm just sharing it. I do not have any production grade applications, but Cellstrad uh, has a build. Uh, applications but i'm not sure if llama index is used to that jnr imagine view upcoming gen ai product we are using lang chain but uh, definitely we would love to explore llama index in the coming versions yeah. you can still uh, integrate lang chain with the llama index as well uh, hmm. lang chain is uh, one level of framework uh, on top of it actually so yeah. i see okay so um, hey, uh, this is Shashi Reddy. Uh, I used to live in Lotus 403. Um, I recently moved to Hyderabad. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, Shashi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, we even productionized uh, with a long chain, right? Initially, mm -hmm. we started with uh, Lama Index. Uh, of course, I did this POC. Uh, so I used to experiment a lot. And uh, so now we created API. Um, on top of this uh, lang chain and uh, a bot we created for the government of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, so we also indexed a lot of data, a lot of PDF documents, uh, Excel sheets, and also uh, integrated with a bunch of websites also, like, you know, it reads uh, web URLs also and, uh, and update the index. And uh, this index, uh, we experimented with uh, Pinecone, Elastic, and also MongoDB. So finally, like you know, we see good results from MongoDB as well as uh, Pinecone. At the end of the day, like you know, how you create the you know Elastic cluster in the back end. So I have uh, maybe at the end of this, probably I'll showcase some piece of code to you. Hey, Shashi, that's good. How is the performance in your case when you work with? The long performance time? is uh, like you know, uh, see. Uh, the, by default, the Llama index, right? I know it, it maintains its uh, in-memory kind of a database, right? So once you restart or maybe like, you know, if you dockerize, then you, you will not have all the data unless you go with the uh, static version of uh, 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 the Kubernetes uh, pod, right? So uh, you need to have some kind of a backend, whether it is a Pinecone or MongoDB or Elastic. So, the lang chain is offering for you like you know where you can you know integrate you can create index in any of the backend databases so if you have a good uh, uh, you know elastic cluster uh, a simple two node or four node cluster uh, and you can ingest a lot of data right so of course i have uh, more than a 10 tb data uh, in my elastic of course that is going through the lang chain uh, framework hey, hey, that's great okay so can you know which LLM are you using? I'm sorry? Okay, can I know like, yeah, which LLM you are using? Uh, the, the, see, the open, yeah, we experimented at least like, you know, seven to eight, uh, 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 you know, models. Uh, but, so is there uh, any chance you are using like open source thing? The open source, right? Open AI, but the other thing is language. No, no, I meant to say like the paid version, right? Open, it's not, no, it's not paid version. It's all. Uh, my own private uh, private context I created. Uh, which one? Which one you are talking? Um, uh, it was three four months back. Let me open my screen. Yeah, no, actually we need to move forward with our current yeah. webinar. Yeah, 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 sure. sure. So we have an that we can do later. Uh, you know, and set up a different webinar. Let's uh, Bismillah, you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there is already a lot of expert users here. But okay, just you know, let's see. Even I'm just learning. Uh, if you see into the documents, uh, you could just see the how it is being chunked. Uh, so you can say these are the entire documents that we have. So these are just list of chunks. So you can just look into like one of that the first chunk, how it is being chunked. Uh, Bismillah, could you please show us how the chunking happens for the Excel data or CSV data and what strategy normally goes through? How do we do that in code? Uh, I do not have a working code here. Uh, but I will explore and I know I'll share you later. Yeah, this is just a basic practical introduction, but um, you could connect. Uh, the, the, there is a Lomantex uh, Discord channel is there. Um, there's a lot of blogs and supporting materials. Um, just if we could uh, search into it, definitely we have it. But I will also you know probably just try to build a CSV based uh, rag and then before I'll share it. Yeah. So, so yeah, we have shared a note. You can try our product image in view. We are able to uh, embed using LangChain and VBAT embedding multiple data formats. So just a uh, not there yeah bismillah go back to you yeah so uh, this is just you know um there are uh, if you look into my data directory um there are a bunch of documents both uh, text documents and pdf documents right so there is a pdf here um there is a text document here so what it would have done is it does whatever the documents here it is able to convert those into chunks and build an index out of it. I mean, uh, this one. So, for the, uh, this is just the first chunk, right? And it has stored all the metadata, the, the page numbers, the file names, and what is the actual text content of it. So, this is how the chunks work. Um, and once it's there, then this will actually convert those text chunks into an embeddings and stores that as a searchable index here. So everything is done as a you know, abstracted way. So that's how it's been built so that, but if you're an advanced user, you also have a granular control over that. Yeah, that's what we know. All right, uh, we saw this, we saw this. Oh. Okay, yeah, I think um, building a basic rag is very straightforward, and especially with the framework like Lamandex, it's a lot more easier. I think even, you know, uh, college graduates or even high school students can do it. It's as easy as that. Uh, but uh, how do we, uh, but is that enough? Okay. Um, the thing is, the basic rags, when you actually build in real world applications, it is going to face a lot of challenges, uh, especially in terms of relevant answers and fetching the relevant context and generating the you know uh, correct response. You will see that that doesn't work anymore. Because in the real world scenarios are very complex. Your questions are not very simple, you know, who is the chief minister of Karnataka? It's nothing like that. The questions can be very complex. It could be like multiple questions sending to like one um, query. And uh, uh, the the re uh, retrievers part is very significant here. So how to retrieve the right context? Right? So that's why the basic rag doesn't work anymore. And you need to use a lot more advanced techniques. And some of the techniques are mentioned here. So for example, the sentence window retriever, um, the auto matching retriever, which is mentioned here. And for example, if you have a PDF document, 
okay and in the pdf document if you have tables then your pdf is a combination of both structured uh, content like tables and unstructured content like your text right now how can you uh, if you're just building a basic rack and uh, if you're trying to get the right information from this table it doesn't work so then you need to have this kind of a mechanism to actually uh, retrieve the right table for you okay so there are many techniques and uh, we will see these two techniques today sentence window retriever and uh, automation retriever okay as i mentioned uh, the basic rag has a lot of limitations and now we will go into a more advanced techniques and uh, these can be grouped into like these four uh, groups uh, the table sticks where you have how can you play with the chunkings right we talked a lot about chunking and in the chunking the mainly like how the what is the right chunk size the chunk size plays a lot and can we do a hybrid search? So can we only do semantic search or can we also combine this with the traditional keyword search, right? So sometimes the keyword search is a lot more matured. The, the algorithms and the technology is a lot more mature because it, it is happening for several decades. So we need to, we just can't abandon the keyword search aspect, right? So although we have a more powerful technique but combining with this more mature keyword search will actually improve your performance there is another thing called metadata filter which you'll see in the next slide how would is that for uh, and then this is in terms of like chunkings right and then how do we improve the retriever so retriever uh, there is uh, we'll see this small topic retriever uh, but then you can also use a re-ranking techniques. Uh, we'll see what is that. So we'll not do uh, focus on this because this is a little more advanced. Maybe we'll cover in future uh, sessions. All right. Um, chunking size matters, right? So this is based on this blog from one of the Lamandex developer. Um, his name is Ravi Teja, but would also follow him. I actually, I met... Um, uh, I, I happened to attend this one of the sessions, and that is when I got, Charles, got a chance to introduce, introduce to the Islam text, right? Okay. So chunk size really matters. Uh, if you are using a smaller chunk size, then it offers finer granularity, uh, but it might risk or it, what happens is the context starts breaking, and sometimes you will not get the holistic view of the context, uh, but let's say if you start increasing your chunk size then you could get a better relevant context um, uh, but it might also that a larger chunk size will lead to some other problem um, that that is called loss in the middle um, and it could also be affecting your latency right so there is a balancing act. So selecting the optimal chunk size is a more empirical approach. So you need to try to find a sweet spot between your granularity and comprehensiveness, right? And how do we find that? Um, there are some evaluations of this, right? So in order to do some experiments and to do a comparative analysis, we need an objective comparisons, right? And uh, and how do we set up an objective comparisons? And for that, we need to set up a certain metrics, right? Certain evaluation metrics. And uh, these are the most frequently used um, uh, evaluation metrics in ranks, which is the faithfulness and relevancy. Uh, so faithfulness, it tells you like how uh, is the answer correct, right? You ask the question and the rag returns a response. Is this answer correct or it is, you know, uh, or mapping to your question? Second relevancy is, is the correct relevant context has been provided to the um, elements. So this we'll see it in later. And also the third one would be like the latency, right? 
so how fast uh, you know or if you are using a very large probably the the time it takes to return a response might be uh, also being increasing so you need to do more empirical approach and then you need to decide which chunk size is actually a right fit for you um, yeah, probably I just see or use one of the notebooks from the Romantic scheme itself. Uh, let, uh, let me pull that notebook. Are you able to share your collab notebook? Uh, yeah, I'll put it into a GitHub and then I'll share. Sure, and, sure. So in this, we, uh, you know, the author has experimented with the different chunk size. Okay, what is chunk size? Uh, it's basically the number. Um, it's basically the the the, you know, the, uh, the number of tokens that is there in a particular chunk. Whether you want 128 tokens or 256 or 512, um, right? Um, so we are just setting up a um a simple evaluation pipeline just to experiment with different chunk size and see you know with whether the chunk size matters and for that again from the llama index just import these three which basically takes care of the these two takes care of the ingestion and this basically builds the service context for your llama rag and then we uh, build in some utilities functions that can calculate the faithfulness and the relevancy evaluation metrics. And there is an utility called dataset generator, which means takes your uh, documents and probably synthesize certain questions. Um, and then uh, we can also the answers and you can use this question and answers to actually evaluate your rag on different chunk size uh, by calculating faithfulness and relevancy. Okay. So I just use my OpenAI environment, and uh, basically it uh, uh, builds a document index on uh, this UBED PDF. Okay, and uh, so for the experiment purpose, we are just using the first 20 documents, and the data set generator basically generates 40 questions for our evaluation experiments. And these are the you know, 40 questions that we will be evaluating it. And this, this is your LLM. And uh, since I do not yet have access to GPT-4, um, I just have GPT, uh, Chat GPT Plus. I do not have the APA version of GPT-4 yet. Uh, but it would be good if you already have it and use GPT-4 as an evaluator, right? So your LLM synthesizer would be uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo. But whatever the response that uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo generates will be sent to GPT 4 to evaluate and score your faithfulness and relevancy. Okay. And uh, also, we are measuring you know the latency uh, for different chunks. So this is your function. So if, I, if we can just walk through it, it's pretty straightforward. It just takes different chunk size and takes all your 40 questions. And for every questions in your evaluation questions, uh, we are generating a response from our, uh, let's say, GPT 3.5 uh, Turbo as our LLM. And then it sends that response back to our faithfulness evaluator that sends this response to GPT 4 and get the faithfulness rank and also the relevancy rank. So now we know what how much time it took, what was the faithfulness score, what is the relevancy score. And if you can average that over all your 40 questions, then you get for a particular chunk size, what is your average response time, what is your average faithfulness, what is your average relevancy. Then you could experiment that with different uh, values of chunk size. And whichever is giving you a higher score of faithfulness and relevancy, at the same time, not so, uh, you know, uh, so slow in, in responding, then that is what you need to select as your chances. 
it's a more of a practical approach. Yeah, I, I do not have a GPT-4 um, access yet. I, what I did was just for the having a sense of how this works, I just used the same GPT-3.5 as my evaluator, um, but it doesn't give me a right uh, experimental results. So if once I have GPT-4, I think I should be able to generate a proper response. But this is what the chunk size will impact your LLM's response. And this is one of the approach that you can use to evaluate and select the right chances. Okay. I'll just stop here. Uh, any discussions, questions? We can do. Any questions, folks? Uh, so uh, one question, is this faithfulness and, and other stuff, is it like a ready-made APIs or to build them? Sorry, can you repeat your questions? I couldn't fully I get think, you. Uh, the way you are checking the faithfulness and other stuff, is that like okay. ready-made APIs? Yeah, so that is also abstracted for you. Um, so the Llama index has their own evaluation pipeline. Okay. And uh, to get a faithfulness and relevancy score, it is based on an another LLM. Okay. You have one LLM that will generate your answers. There is an another LLM which will check whether this answer is correct or not. Yeah, and that is that should be ideally at higher level, right? So that's what you yeah. So in, in our experiment, we use D3.5 Debo as our um, answer generator and GPT-4 as our evaluator. And this uh, evaluation is done based on two metrics, faithfulness and relevancy. And this is already implemented as an API function within the Llama Index framework. OK, thank you. Yeah, Bismillah. <clears throat> Uh, I had a question. Uh, what if we have custom made questions and answers for the evaluation? So, can we pass those here? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, this one we just for experimental purpose, we generated our own thing. So, you could do okay. your question and answers. So, and yeah. Just we had to change the table questions, right? Okay. Yeah, correct. So is there any formula like um, how this faithfulness or relevancy really works, like background, uh, how it does? Yes. Um, so there is a, um, yeah, it's a score of 0 to 1. So there is one more framework called uh, True Lens, I think. So there is also a course recently released from deeplearning.ai. Uh, which uses, I think, one week back. So which combines two things, the Lama index, and you know, the next uh, notebook is also based on that. Um, so it, there's also another framework called True Lens, which basically also does the evaluation part of it. So I'm not sure what is the mathematics. I pretty sure it is very simple to understand. I didn't have time to actually go and check it, but it would be some ratio, like some simple uh, uh, formula. Yeah. But I will just try to read it, and then maybe if I find it, I'll just uh, share it with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so with that chunk size, then I uh, will go to some other uh, the next topic, which is uh, even more interesting, I guess. All right, um, um, yeah, this is some, you know, some pragmatic approach, what Lama Index has. So what I say it is like, uh, let's say you have uh, a, a document and then, uh, uh, if you could actually add the metadata filtering, then you could improve the response of your LLM in a better way, right? So when you add metadata like page numbers, um, uh, author, organization, or even you know years, right? So when if you don't ingest 
this metadata's into your context right so this is basically your context the text chunk that the retriever gets it but along with this if you do a little bit of metadata filtering then there is a higher chance that you would actually filter the unrelevant context out of your uh, pipeline and give the llm a more refined more relevant context to your llm in that way you could you know um, improve the performance of your llms right so for example um, i don't know i'll just pull up for one of the llm uh, llama index uh, presentation only oh, so everything is there and now um, okay let's build the llama index uh, pvt only so what happens is let's say you have a collection of uh, documents and if you are asking can you tell me the risk factors in 2021 and if you are doing a simple semantic search then your llm's response would have a low precision so which means that there will be a lot of false positives right uh, what what do you mean by false positives? You, you are looking at 2021, but whatever the retriever retrieves or documents from 2020, 2019, right? So these tools are not relevant for me, right? Now with a simple metadata filtering, you could just augment that. Then it would then take only the 2021 documents, and then you could generate an answer out of it. Okay. Uh, Bismillah, so this metadata filtering is that is that have to be the manual input or is it uh, automatically uh, inferred from the query itself? Yeah, uh, in the Lama index, you uh, it's, it's similar to how I showed uh, different uh, functionalities in the yeah, similar to how I showed different functionalities, you have something called metadata generator like that i do not know exactly maybe we could just one second i'm trying to pull my metadata example i think this one so this is also again from lama index so okay so this is a metadata filter which is built on top of pine cone so what it does is um first we are creating an index right uh, next, what you are doing is everything chunk is a node actually, right? Uh, either it could be a text node. So during that, you could just add those metadata. So it will be a manual process only. And then, uh, and then once you are doing your uh, injections and retrievers, so then we basically do this. Uh, functionalities from Lama Index. So you could build a metadata filter functionalities and you could just say what are the key value path that we are looking at. And uh, then the retriever would take those as filters when it is uh, building a retriever. So now it will retrieve only on those additional metadata filters right so now i will look only for mafias so the theme is the 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 this is a simple uh, example but you just imagine it and extrapolate to a real world system so we have a, a, a metadata called a theme right and it has different values fiction mafia like that and uh, similarly uh, and uh, if you just filter it on the theme uh, and give the value as mafia, then it will look only for the movies that are having the mafia as their theme, right? So similarly, in the example, whatever I showed, if you're just saying year and just say 2021, then it will look for documents that has only 2021 documents. It will not look for the other documents. Uh, so, uh, Bismillah, suppose if you have a scenario, uh, where uh, suppose company policy is this year 1.0. So next year company is introducing like 2.0 policy. So the the questions, whatever we ask, it should go to the 2.0 uh, to get the relevant answers. 
So will it be applicable for this meta filter here, this portion? Uh, it could be, right? So you could have the version and then you could say 1.2. But how will it redirect? Like, how does it know? Like, because we can't give in the question, okay, go and look into the policy 2.0. Because we directly ask the question and the the model itself, it, so it should be able to get the latest document instead of like um, archive documents, right? So will there be any topic in the future or like uh, in your presentation about this? Uh, okay, yeah, I will look into it. I also not sure, but I think it might there be some other techniques that will handle this. But for no. me, what I'm saying is if you would have tagged it, uh, if you are added some metadata, if you you could approach it different way. If you want to add metadata like the version, and uh, probably once 1.0 is archived, then you just update your pipeline that always it will look for uh, uh, version 2.0. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So I think this last two techniques is more interesting than whatever we saw previous. That chunks also there have a lot of practical advance. Um, so there is a something called uh, you. Uh, yeah, the thing is the the larger the context we give, uh, we think that the LLM will. Uh, generate a better response, right? I think most of time, what they will do is they will give as much context as possible. And uh, but if uh, you would have also seen like different versions of LLMs coming with larger context window, right? 32k, you know, uh, 64k, like that. Um, but again, there is a problem there, right? So when you give a larger context, sometimes the LLM's answer is still not so accurate. Why? Because there's a problem called lost in the middle. Because if you give a large context, then it is trying to sort of compress all this information and trying to give a very generic answer. But if you are looking for a very particular answer, then that context is lost. So that is where we go for a approach called small to big. Okay. And in that umbrella approach of small to big, there are multiple approaches today we will see two uh, one is called the sentence window retrieval now how does this works right so let's say you have a paragraph of this much length and you could break this into at sentence level and uh, you could then chunk that and put that in embed that and store that as an index and when you're sending a question Probably out of all these sentences in this paragraph, the most relevant sentence would be is this highlighted in red, right? But it would be beneficial for the LLM to look back and look forward within this sentence, right? And that window can be expanded. So instead of just looking at the red region, you could add information from the back and also from the front and then give that information to the LLM and by that the context is improved and the LLM will give a better response. I think that is clear, if not. So, Bismillah, will this impact the latency of the response? Uh, yes, uh, but I don't think there is a major impact. Uh, I think it's a more um, efficient way instead of just giving a very a large context. Um, it's just trying to find uh an expanded context within you know whatever it finds the right one so 
what would be a more inefficient way is just sends the entire pdf as a context to your LLM, right and now it is possible let's say you have like three four page pdfs uh, you could just send the entire context and if it comes within the context limitation you could just send the entire four page pdf to your LLM, uh, thinking that it will give you the right answer but what would be a more efficient way is try to find one sentence within this four page document where the answer might be lying and then try to expand from that point onwards and then expanded it to few paragraphs front and back instead of sending the four page document to the lineup okay okay got it This uh, small to big, just quickly, you could explain in one or two lines again. This small to big, I got lost a little bit. Okay. The small to big uh, thing is uh, what a typical um, approach would be is um, if you give as much context as possible to the LLM, it is expected that the LLM will give you the right answer because we mm -hmm. don't know where is the answer lying right correct four page document mm. we don't know where is the answer yes so sometimes we might give only the first page to the llm but the answer might be in the third page mm. Mm. now what is the other approach is send the four page as your context to your llm but so it means that you are sending a longer context but the problem is it will be there that in the third page, first paragraph, third sentence is where the answer is. But since you are sending four pages, the LLM will get lost. It might go and find in the second page, third paragraph. Okay. So instead of that, uh, break this context into at sentence level. Okay. And try to find the most relevant sentence within this four page document but once you find the sentence the context could be very at very granular level very sentence level right it doesn't know the context what is what is described before and what is the context following after this sentence so you could then expand the context add one or two paragraphs before this sentence add one or two paragraphs after this sentence, then give that context to your LLM. Then your response will be better. OK. No, OK. Yeah. So do you have any code? I didn't quite understand how you find the previous. You just look for the previous and below se chunk segments and attach them? Yes, correct. Ah, got it, got it. Exactly. So we uh, the window will be let's say uh, if you give the window parameter as three, it will take the three chunks before, three chunks after, and add that as a context and give us a one in chunk. So it is like over overlap chunking uh, length you are trying to give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overlap. Chunking. Well, because in the line chain there is a uh, there is a parameter like oh, when we are giving the chunk size, so we have to provide the overlapping chunk size also, like 200, 300. So uh, it will create a chunks uh, and it will overlap with the previous chunk of like whatever we give the uh, size. Is it is it similar to that or like is it something different? This is different. See. Um, okay. Yeah. See uh, the uh, what we do is we go as granular as possible and then try to expand from that okay do you have some code uh, to represent this uh, concept yeah sure uh, we'll see that Dinesh, um, okay. i think this is like on the retrieval side and the chunking is on the creating the vector D db side right that is while creating the vector db the chunks are overlapping here you take a fine grain chunk and when you find the relevant answer or embedding then you retrieve the chunk above and you retrieve the chunk below and pass all three to the llm in the context so but th uh, that we don't have control right usually see in the similarity search so it will give the top k 
so from that it will choose so uh, no, I, I guess, yeah, so maybe maybe bismillah will show how the above yeah. and below things are sent okay perfect thank you okay yeah so this is an advanced rank so just a recall right uh, let's say i have a pdf like this right and uh, then this is just then done with the typical the basic way where we have a simple directory reader it chunks into documents and then in text and then you start asking questions to your query engine and just start replying to it so now how can we uh, it's implement the same with uh, a sentence window retrieval is you have your llm and then you build sentence window index okay instead of just building a simple uh, index what we show here right instead of building a simple index we build a sentence window index and uh, and this is just an utility function. You can go into the documents. So once you have that, and you basically build a sentence window query engine on top of it, and then you start querying on it. Now, if you compare this response to this response, you will find a better answer in terms of relevancy and your faithfulness. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, we can see the uh, things. So, for example, we are asking what are the steps taken when finding projects to build your experience, right? When you are building an AA career. So, it's just answers when finding projects to build your experience. There are several steps you can take. First, you can join existing projects. Um, if you have an idea, additionally, you can develop a side as well, so personal, and blah, blah, blah. And, but if you compare on a sentence window query engine, the answer is more relevant, I think. The, to get started on a project in AI, it is important to first identify and scope the project. Consider what areas of AI interest you align with your variables once you have identified project and blah, blah, blah. And why this is? Because it is able to break these documents at a sentence level and then expand the context on us, uh, on, you know, from there on. And how this is built, uh, let's then go and see the code itself. This is again, this code is taken from that course. So I highly recommend that you go and try that course on deeplearning.a. It's a short course. And could you put a link to the course uh, in the chat? Or yeah, the sure. name of the course? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. I think now we have the code. Sorry, what is the name of the course? Uh, deep learning .ai, there is a short course. Just one second, I will. Uh, On Llama index or? What is no, the this course name? This is about sentence window, right? Sentence window, I believe. Just one second. Course name. Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay, here it is. Okay, I put the course link in the chat. So, and uh, Yeah, from it runs. This is where we build the sentence window index as well as the sentence window query engine. Um, yeah, this is another framework, True Lens, uh, where you can evaluate the model. So this is the building sentence window index where we say that we want sentence window node parser, right? 
so basically how every chunk in your documents is actually is converted into a node right and your retriever goes and finds the most relevant k nodes from this right and how do you uh, this how do you convert or chunks these documents into nodes is basically a different different approach the basic one is just converts those into 128 or 256 token size and then that's basically a very naive node parser right now you could also do some advanced things and that's what we are discussing today it's like what we call they call it a sentence window node parser and how this work it's what i explained in that schematic and what it does is it takes the parameter as three right three means it looks uh, back one uh, chunk and looks um, forward one chunk and and the middle one chunk so the total window size will be three okay. see i am seeing an opportunity for knowledge graph on the content right so uh, intuitively uh, bismillah you think this needs knowledge graph uh, or graph uh, innovation, how to chunk the content, uh, or I am going off track, you feel? Yeah, I don't know. Um... Uh, some have tried uh, superimposing knowledge graph on a vector DB. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the data. I think some uh, do have seen, you know, some of them have seen improved performance yeah, with knowledge graphs. Yeah, because we were, I was hearing nodes, right? Creating nodes mm. or chunks. So that got me thinking that okay. maybe there is some overlap with graph uh, and graph neural networks. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I know it's too complicated. It already is too complex, and that will add another layer of complexity because graphs are very difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, just uh, practically, this is how the sentence window um, index is built. So just if you want to improve your LLM performance, and this is basically the code, I think the code is straightforward. The thing is, you need to play with this window size, um, 3, 5, 7, and just evaluate it and see which gives you the right um, performance scores for you. That's a simple, yeah, just it returns an uh, index here. Yeah. And how this works behind the scheme is what I explained in the previous schematic. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, So with that, I will go to the next technique. Uh, just so the next technique is uh, something called auto merging retrieval. This is again comes under the concept of small to big, right? Uh, now we know um, like uh, a documents is chunked into smaller, uh, uh, chunks of text right and this chunks can be a smaller granular which contains just like 120 the size could be 128 now they form a hierarchical relationships right now four smaller chunks uh, or we can say the other way one big chunk of 512 can be broken into four smaller chunks of 128 right um likewise uh, you can do for everything and um, so these are all called the parent chunk and these are the the child chunk right now what will happen is when you are when you are converting your documents into granular chunks right and if you are retrieving the top k relevant chunks it is not always guaranteed that all the k chunks will come from the same parent chunk right so one might come from this parent and the other two might come from this parent and another one will come from another parent because of that the 
the contacts might get lost okay now how can we solve this is what we call uh, they call it as auto merging okay now we have a hierarchy of smaller chunks connecting back to a bigger parent chunk now you could put a mechanism that once the retriever retrieves the top k relevant chunks and if you put a threshold that if out of this k chunks if three chunks are coming from one parent then instead of using this three chunk i will just combine this and use this parent chunk which means that i'll be using all these four chunks okay so this threshold right if that whether you want to combine if it is more than an n number of chunks coming from the same parent that is basically an user parameter so in this way the loss in the middle problem is overcome can you give an example like a intuitive example of this parent uh is it like a chapter and a page and a paragraph is that is that the parent child here or what, what, is it a physical uh, parent stuff or is it something else yes yes so it's so this could be like a parent uh, sorry a paragraph so a paragraph can be uh, broken into multiple sentences right and so this could be another paragraph broken into multiple sentence but you will be retrieving at a sentence level okay but the, sometimes uh, um, those whatever the sentences that are retrieved could coming from different uh, paragraphs but what could be more uh, better is to look it at one cohesive paragraph instead of fragmenting into multiple paragraphs so in that way, uh, in, if there is uh, two sentences of a particular paragraph is, is coming as the most relevant. So instead of using only those two sentences, I will just expand it and I will merge it. So that instead of using the two sentences of that paragraph, I'll use the entire paragraph. Well, this is very interesting, Vismila. We have been doing this rag and all, but you are bringing up a lot of interesting topics which sort of uh, were not considered so far when we were doing RAG. Because what, whatever we are doing could be highly inefficient, right, based on what we are discussing here. Because we have been just doing basic RAG, right, and, and that could be doing in a very inefficient manner, not combining, duplicating, you know, error-prone chunks, error-prone semantic search. And mm -hmm. then and, and, and that may be the reason why the answers from LLM are still somewhat suboptimal because we never considered all of these points in doing RAG. Exactly, yeah. That's why like the basic RAGs will fail in many cases and we will be mostly doing fine tuning or probably prompt engineering. But I, mean, this is, I would request your help in fixing our RAG in Imagine View product, but I understand you are quite busy, so. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just getting started with it. Uh, I will definitely get into a real world use case, uh, yeah. uh, collaborating with the team, and I will start, you know, putting into practice all these techniques. Okay. Um, looking at the core thing yeah, again, yeah, this is. Um, Again, this is already implemented as a Lama index thing. So only thing is you should understand different advanced techniques, different advanced merging or you know, um, things like you know um, sentence to window retrieval or auto merging or uh, there is something called re-ranking, right? What is re-ranking? I think someone uh, already know it. Like, see, we the retriever will retrieve top k relevant documents right uh, but sometimes uh, not always these are uh, ordered in the correct uh, order so what could be is better to re-rank this um, 
and it is not always that the first k will be the most relevant so there is something called re-ranking the which i have not explored yet but i'm just telling that there is another technique so there are many more techniques like this so in context of auto merging how it is implemented in code is how we can just look into this code and we'll come to know like similar to how the uh, sentence window retrieval was implemented there is something called hierarchical node parser right so as i mentioned every chunk is a node and how do you pass these nodes is what you know what determines how the retrieval will work and how the retrieval will retrieve the relevant nodes from it and uh, just if you want to use auto merging then the function that you need to use is hierarchical node parser and uh, and then this also, right? This is again a, a hyperparameter. Um, whether you want your uh, parent node should be of 2048, 512, 128. If it is 2048, I think it will uh, chunk it into um, many more pieces. And this might be chunking into four chunks like that. And uh, then, you know, um, just get those and convert that into nodes and what are the leaf nodes from this parent node then you can get the leaf nodes right so this is basically the parent node and this is basically the child node then you can have a merging auto merging context and that basically builds your auto merging indexing and once you have an auto merging indexing then you can build a query engine on top of it okay and uh, yeah that is basically the code implementation and the intuition of how this works is what i explained here okay. i'll share this code and uh, also uh, you could go and take that deep learning course that is explained in detail all these methods um and my code is also that only. And uh, with that, I'll just, uh, my last slide for today. Yeah. So the basic uh, RAG has a lot of pain points. Okay. Um, the retrieval will be bad and it is not able to handle the structured and unstructured data. And um, there are solutions that is proposed from Lama Index. And if you are, a rag is facing a certain problem and you could use some of these techniques right we don't know which technique is applicable for which uh, you know what kind of problem you are facing but this could be uh, working as a cheat sheet whenever you are facing certain problems in your rag you could try one of these techniques we saw only few of them we saw only mainly the small to big probably metadata but there are so many other advanced techniques right like for example routing is a very interesting thing right um then like for example what uh, another previous question there is a version 1.0 2.0 you could also explore routing right um I, I used to think rag is simple but now you have opened the pandora's box okay so rag has so many things i didn't even know <laughs> yeah yeah, um, uh, Bismillah, uh, the routing I understand uh, you're trying to uh, better. I don't think it will answer v uh, version one, version two, but because I have even used routings and agents uh, oh. to experiment. Uh, okay. Even I use it because the routings are mainly to redirect the question, right? So suppose you have the SQL database, so where you wanted to uh, uh, QA with the database, and there is a PDF chain and there is a database chain. Maybe you have extra CSV chain. So these three kinds of chains are there. When you input some question, so the question has to redirect among these three. So for that purpose, either routing or agent will be really helpful. Uh, even um, both, we can use it uh, for this scenario. And when it comes to the agent that is having some extra functionality where um, redirecting, not only the redirecting the question, it okay. can go from the chain one, chain two, chain three, chain. Suppose if you're asking a uh, question like, uh, 
uh, so if there is no rain in the next week i would like to book a ticket so this is the question so it has a lot of uh, things to do right first it has to predict the whether there is a rain or not second th- thing is like a booking of a ticket these two are completely different actions so in that case agents are really helpful but routing is very simple and uh, very efficient also why because uh, the routing of the question is really important uh, when it comes to that so that is separate uh, technique also is available we can see in the routing yeah i just wanted to add that point thank you okay yeah yeah sure thank you yeah as i mentioned uh, i am i am just a beginner in this area so i think many people are more advanced users so i think your insights and answers are very helpful yeah we could plan for some more advanced hands on sessions in future but that's all i have for today i hope uh, you got some insights into what drag is and you know what are some advanced techniques bismillah this is really great uh, great uh, ones i just one follow up like question so mm-hmm. you in beginning you showed like a five line uh, kind of way to kind of uh, initiate you know use of llama index right to do the whole ingestion and retrieval uh, flows now mm-hmm. if you start adding some of these additional techniques are they just you know does it like make go from 5 to 500 lines or you were just showing all the additional background helper code but we don't the code we write for the application doesn't need to go balloon to be 10x or 100x as big no 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 a lot of things are already packed for you already taken care for you to so if you are using uh, any of these techniques all you need to is to call the right um, node parsers and um, um, yeah it wouldn't be like implement 10x times of course i don't think so yeah okay and there are also um, there is a good community support from llama text team you could join the discord channel and there is a, like a llama packs are available um, so that could be a good starting point if you have a particular use case and there is already uh, uh, packs available for it which could already solve a to a certain extent your problem right you don't have to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch so you could use those llama packs and uh, you could also reach out to the community i think they are very supportive and uh, yeah they are doing a lot of uh, contributions to this development okay. in this particular area yes as i mentioned i am also getting started so i would be doing some more uh, you know in depth sessions in futures i will just collaborate with vivek and our community and i will hoping to you know continue this learning and build more complex use case let's see <laughs> yeah well, i am feeling bismillah we almost need a course for this <laughs> so you know right, this is very vast and very very new stuff for the whole world so we literally need a course but we'll discuss offline how to do this okay yeah sure yeah does a deep learning course cover some of these uh, additional techniques yes this uh, uh sentence window retrieval and auto merging is uh, explained and this code is for that course only so just feel free to do that course it's just a very short course Okay. And there is one more interesting framework, right? I mentioned that there is a true lens, um, which basically will evaluate your uh, 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 this uh, this entire framework. So, which means like it it's a more of an uh, experimental framework. So we don't know which uh, which technique is suitable for your applications. So we need to uh, some certain evaluation uh, method, right? Then you could try different methods of this. and within the same method you could experiment with different parameters and then you can then evaluate those uh, methods based on certain metrics especially it is on uh, it's called an evaluation triad and this evaluation triad is measured on three things one is the context relevance second one is the groundedness and the answer relevance so that actually the true lens will take care of it and once you have a table of comparison of all different methods and parameters and compare that based on these three values so whichever is giving the highest uh, score you can select that method right
Uh, let me see if I can pull that. Okay, so once we have this sentence window retrieval, right, and uh, you could just put, yeah. So this is from the True Lens Evaluator, and uh, yeah, you could build, build an you know, um, answer relevance. Then there is something called context relevance, and there's something called grounded nets, right? And then once you have it, you basically evaluate this based on a certain uh, question and answers. Um, and then it could then generate uh, evaluation scores and uh, it could basically converts that into something called this kind of things so for every question what was the answer and what was the context relevant score answer relevant score and grounded net score so it is scaled between zero to one and then you could just build an average of all those questions and whichever is giving you the uh, highest score, average score, you, that technique, you can use it. So this is also one of the nice applications. OK. Bismillah, if you can, put these all these in your, you know, sort of get if you are willing to, and then you can share the link in our AI lab group. Okay, yeah, sure. So, I mean, that's your call because it's your code and your and also the PPT and all. If you want to share, that's your call as well. Sure, sure. I'll do it. I I also got it from community, so I'll share it back to community. Oh, okay, great. So you'll put it back in the WhatsApp group. Yeah, I'll just put all these notebooks into a GitHub repo and also the PPT link, and I'll share it in the WhatsApp. Group. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, we're very, very. I didn't know RAG will be so advanced like Vivek was saying, also. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. <laughs> uh, Jyotin, sir, very much same feeling. Thanks a lot, Bismillah. Incredible session. Audience, any final comments or questions? So, okay, thank you all for joining. Bismillah, absolutely incredible session. It is a privilege to uh, you know learn from you and your expertise, and hope to uh, let's discuss offline how we can create a, a more series on this these kind of topics, and of course uh, desperately waiting for Bismillah's uh, support in our product team. <laughs> right then, yeah, uh, can you share your LinkedIn or something? Okay, yeah, sure. You can scan this QR code. I hope it works. <laughs> 